Well, week three of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, and we're still picking blackberries. Well, we're into week number three of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, and boy, oh boy, the garden is starting to kick it into full swing, which is wonderful, even if it does mean there's a lot going on. Uh, we also did some berry picking and a few other things, so stay tuned as we show you how the week went. So we started off the week with some blueberry picking. It was amazing. It made me realize we need to do a lot of work on our own blueberries in order to get them to look like those. But we're going to try once again to do some blueberry syrup and not have it turn into jelly this time. So stay tuned to see if that actually works. And uh, basically it's stuff from the garden this week, which is wonderful, wonderful. As you can see here, we've got tomatoes starting. We've picked another round of beans and uh, definitely need to get some herbs and things picked because they're looking so plentiful and beautiful right now and we need to get those in the dehydrator. First thing we're going to start with is some pickles. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ange, gave us enough pickles to do a couple jars because pickles are Alex's favorite and our cucumbers have done awful this year. So she had a few extra, so we're going to try and get a couple jars at least so that we can put them away because every bit does count. So for making pickles today, I have my trusty sidekick Alex here to help out because she's the one who likes the pickles so much. Pickles are my love life. Yes. A love story. Wait, that doesn't work. Love life doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Um, anyway, she I likes them pickles. a lot. She loves pickles. I eat, sleep, and breathe pickles. So, we're going to get a few of these done. Do you want to tell people what you have done so far? I'm cutting off the blossom end of the pickles and then eating them. Mm -hmm. Cucumbers aren't bad. So you want to definitely make sure you remove the blossom ends after you wash your cucumbers. And there's our jars all finished up. <laughs> it won't shut off until we're... <laughs> Take 17. <laughs> there's the sound. Our jars are all sterilized and ready to go. And we're going to uh, basically be cold packing these cukes into the jars and putting a hot liquid brine over top. So what have you got so far in your pot? I have four cups of vinegar and four cups of water. You can do more if you want, we just have not a very large amount of cucumbers, so we don't need a large amount of stuff. That's correct. So basically, Alex has gotten all of our jars ready to be packed with these cucumbers. They have one clove of garlic, half a tablespoon of pickling salt, half a tablespoon of dill weed, and half a teaspoon of pickling spice. Clee, uh, at this point then we pack the spears in and we're going to put another half tablespoon of dill seed on top. And the reason we're doing this method is because I'm using dill that I have dried previously because I don't have any dill in the garden right now because I yanked it all out because I had no cucumbers. So I didn't really need it and we dried a whole bunch. So that's why we're using this method. Otherwise you would just take a couple heads off of your dill plant and put them right into the jar. But this is method that's going to work for us for today. Now I do not water bath can my pickles. We just do them right to the rim and that works for us. And there we are. Alex ended up with six jars of dill pickles. I think she's quite pleased with that. Full family affair again as we make our August stew for the second week. But this should end up being enough for us for the whole season. Alex is working hard on garlic and James is cutting up the fresh beans. So it's time for us to do a little bit of harvesting on some celery for this recipe. We only had six stalks left in the fridge, so we're going to raid what we have here. And at the same time, we're going to get ourselves a little bit of parsley and some basil. All right, so the mundane part of this August stew is all done. The veggies are washed and chopped to the size that is ready for using what, Alex? A bullet thingy because we got a gift. The, um, which was a, um, We blender. got a brand new food processor. And a blender. And it's a blender and, and everything board. else all in one. And we're excited yeah. to uh, try it out. Because if you watched uh, the first uh, week of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, I made August stew and my blender died. <laughs> so we're back at it. Let's see if we can kill this one. I do have to officially say this new food processor is incredible. Oh my goodness. Did the onions beautifully. Perfect size little pieces, just wonderful. Now it's time to test the little spinny slicer on our beans and carrots and celery and see if I'm just as pleased with that. And it's, it's almost a little bit small, the pieces that it's cutting these beans into. 
But as you can see, I can actually video and food process at the same time. It's not that bad. Actually, it didn't do bad. That's awesome. Super excited. All right, for anybody who missed this recipe in the first every bit counts we are going to go through it here again but you really should subscribe and go back and watch that video too because why not put in a selfish plug here but basically we started off with 12 cloves of our uh, wonderful music garlic from the garden six onions and a quarter cup of butter fried that up for a little bit then we added uh, beans you want 12 cups of cut up beans however you want they can be wax beans snap beans uh, they could be lima beans, world's your oyster on that. Uh, then we added 12 to 15 stalks of celery. As you can see here, we used some store-bought, but we also picked some of our wonderful pink celery, which, which is really starting to come along. Then it's 12 to 15 carrots sliced up in here. And the last ingredient was six cups of peas um, that we added. Now we had four cups that were cut up snap peas from our garden, and then I made it up with basically the two cups of uh, peas from store-bought already shelled. Uh, you can just use store-bought, you can use whatever you have. This recipe is very versatile, very easy. I mean, you even saw with the celery, we use the leaves and everything uh, when we put it in here and it gives it amazing flavor. So basically at this point, we want to put in one cup of fresh parsley and one cup of fresh basil. And I prefer to measure that after I've chopped them all up, uh, just gives you a bunch more flavor in there. And then it calls for three to four liters of either stewed tomatoes or tomato juice. You can use fresh tomatoes, just make sure you add enough that you get the liquid you need for the canning process. You can add salt and pepper to taste to this. Um, I usually do a couple teaspoons of salt and a couple teaspoons of pepper. Uh, it's not required, but it just saves having to add it later on. And then this is a pressure canning recipe, so you're going to jar this and pressure can. We'll bring you back when we've got these all finished up and show you just how we did. I'm hoping to get at least 16 jars. An ingredient I forgot to mention, which I should because it's kind of important, is three-eighths of a cup of lemon juice. I always add that right before the canning process, not when I'm boiling it off. I add it right before I can. August stew is a wonderful, wonderful recipe that is so full of great fresh items from the garden if you happen to be fortunate enough to grow them. And even if you don't grow them, you can acquire them in the month of August because they are available plentifully at uh, garden markets, things like that, even your grocery store. So definitely take advantage of this and to get out there and use some of those fresh ingredients and preserve them for those winter months. Well, it's 10.30 at night and we're still going. Prep for tomorrow. We are getting some tomatoes into the oven because I got a big canning day tomorrow with my friend Ange and we're making some roasted tomato pizza sauce. So getting a head start tonight. Well, as you saw us picking blueberries, just the other day, we are busy freezing those blueberries for future use. Same way we did our raspberries and everything else up till now. Flash freezing them and then putting them into bags so that we can take out what we need when we need it. This is our first basket of uh, blueberries. So our one basket just about filled the bag. Now granted, this wasn't the whole basket. We had eaten some because of course, after fresh picking, you must eat some. But since I'm waiting on these uh, tomatoes to finish roasting in the oven, I figured I would do this little project as well. We're getting awfully tight for space in here. Well, today we are at my friend Angela's house and we are canning up a storm using her tomatoes because they're right before mine. And I'm going to show you what we're working on here. We're making charred salsa. Yummy. I do believe I have a video for this and I will link it above for this recipe. Pots are cooking away. Pizza sauce boiling down. And we're getting the pieces in for the charred salsa. Look at that salsa, guys. Oh, gorgeous. Well, we are busy canning up a storm, and as we usually do when Ange and I get together, we're canning more than we anticipated. I believe we're at 74 jars of food today between us. Well, the final day for week number three of the Every Bit Counts Challenge is here, and as you can see from the table, 
We have been working hard this week. That day over at my friend Angela's there really paid off. We got a lot done. And I'm not even showing you what went into the freezer this week, which is quite a bit. But one thing that I did not do fantastic with, again, this is for the third week in a row, is drying herbs and things. I don't know why, it just always seems to go on the back burner. So that is something we are going to do today. We are going to go out and we're gonna collect some herbs and get them into the dehydrator. But before we can do that, we have to make that blueberry syrup because you saw us picking blueberries at the beginning of the week and I still have one basket that needs to be used up. So I don't wanna put this in the freezer because as you've seen, the freezer is chock full it's out of space so we're gonna try and make this blueberry syrup again and hopefully hopefully I don't get blueberry jelly so here we have our blueberries we have 12 and a half cups that's what I had and two and a half cups of water and we're gonna get these to a boil and then we're gonna simmer them for about 20 minutes so that we can strain out that juice basically once I get them to a boil I'm gonna use my handy dandy potato masher and squish these guys down so that I can get as much juice out as possible Let's hope this works. Well, we're going to start off with harvesting a good bunch of this basil because like I said, I am getting it in the dehydrator today. No more messing around. Well, then you can see I've got quite a bit in my big bowl here. So now we're gonna move on to the parsley. Just walking by these quickly on the way to parsley. And as you can see, our lettuce seeds need to be collected. There you can see that one. It's actually splitting open after all the rains that we've had. So you can see here our gorgeous parsley also needs more harvesting because we're starting to see some diebacks, some yellowing. It's time to really get harvesting this before fall comes. I know the dreaded word of fall. Not terrible. And now our bowl also has parsley. We're doing good on this today. And last but not least, we're gonna harvest some oregano. My oregano patch has gotten a little bit overgrown with other things. As you can see, this one here has been allowed to go to seed, but we'll still get something off of it. And one thing I've noticed if I cut it down, even if it had gone to seed like this one, Look at what's coming back. It's coming back lush, so I'll be able to harvest more of this this fall. All right, so while we were outside gathering up those herbs, our uh, blueberries with the water had plenty of time to boil and simmer. So now we are going to strain this through my handy dandy strainer, which you saw in the first episode or first week of Every Bit Counts Challenge. Absolutely love this tool. Makes this kind of job super easy. So we're going to just pour this in here, let it drain, and go from there. Do this carefully. Nobody wants to be sprayed, especially when it's dark purple. <laughs> Don't know if you can see it. Look at all the little blueberry seeds in there. So now I'm basically gonna let this sit for 15 minutes to strain into my next, this bigger pot. And then we're going to add two and a half cups of sugar and uh, boil it and then add some lemon juice and away we go. So at this point now we have our juice strained out. I still have that pulp in my little funnel. Now I'm going to just feed that to the chickens, but you could use it in smoothies or if you wanted to make something out of it. Last time we made it, we did use it for um, crisp and on top of ice cream and it was quite good, um, but we just don't need it right now. So I'm going to be giving it to the chickens. It won't be wasted, but you can use it however you want. The next step now that this is strained is to put in our sugar. Now I'm using golden sugar, uh, brilliant yellow sugar, whatever you want to call it. You can use brown sugar, uh, cane sugar, white sugar. It really doesn't matter. And you can adjust the amount of sugar to your taste bud. So I did 12 and a half cups of berries, two and a half cups of water, and I'm going two and a half cups of the sugar. So basically it's about half a bag of sugar. But the main way that we use, sorry, I'm gonna stir this while I'm talking. The main way that we use this syrup is actually as a drink mix. Uh, we take it and we put it into a two liter pitcher and we put about half a cup to three quarters of a cup of the juice mixture and then fill the pitcher up to the two liter mark. And it is amazing. We've been buying it store bought, sort of like Ribena. Ribena is something that most people are familiar with. 
and uh, we just decided, you know what, we could do this, we can make this, and then we know exactly what's in it. So the raspberry one that we made turned out amazing. I believe we did a video on that, or maybe we just talked about it. I'll see, I'll, I'll link something. And now we're doing the blueberry. Unfortunately, my first attempt turned into jelly. So let's hope that this one works a little bit better. But basically what we need to do now is uh, bring this to a boil and simmer it for 10 minutes. Then we need to add the lemon juice, which is five tablespoons, and then simmer it for another two minutes before we jar this up, which will be perfectly timed since uh, my jars are in the oven sterilizing right now. All right, so it is time. We've put in our five tablespoons of lemon juice. Now, time to jar it up. Ooh, that's hot. First jar out of the oven. It is jellifying a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be like the last time. Well, once again, this week was a super productive week. Yesterday was a busy day with my friend Ange. We managed to can 39 jars of stuff. We did the pizza sauce. The other thing that we did, one of my favorites, charred salsa. Uh, got some clips here of us cooking this up on the barbecue. It was so good and it's so tasty with those little charred bits, but uh, definitely was a winner and only got six jars. So believe me, we'll be coming back to that one and making some more when my tomatoes are ready. And the other thing that we did was tomato juice, which wasn't even on the agenda. And then chili sauce, because everybody needs some chili sauce to go into your chili and beans. So all in all, that was a super productive day. I will admit the last day was a little bit more of a quiet one. I don't even have them here, but I did get four jars of blueberry syrup made. And it actually looks like it's going to stay syrupy. I will put in a clip right now so that you can see it. And uh, I did get the herbs in the dehydrator. So all in all, still productive is our final day of the week. I think so far for canning season, we are up to 284 jars of foods, jellies, pickles, some sort of thing preserved, and never mind what's gone into the freezer. So this has been an amazing year, and uh, I am still going strong, so stay tuned next week to uh, see what we get up to then, because I really don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> the tomatoes are starting to ripen, so I'm sure there'll be tomato content. But anyways, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next video. And we will talk to you next week. Well, we are ending the Every Bit Counts Challenge at 7.30 at night, and we're all out making a family effort of blackberry picking. Again, because we can't let anything go to waste around here. It's just some sort of strange need. Food but obsession. <laughs> food obsession, we're obsessed with collecting food. But anyways, at least we'll never starve. So I hope you enjoyed this segment and uh, look forward to next week and showing you even more of what we get up to.